Right then, well, that's still picture thing I'm doing now. Hopefully that will all be working and look nice. So, you've seen the effects that this stuff can do and, um, okay, in all honesty, it does feel like you can dry brush easier. So, what we want to do now, we want to get some washes in here to kind of um, bring this alive even more. And what I want to do is I want to use the um, black wash by Genesis Models. <clears throat> okay, now this wash, as I said, it's a nice light wash which um, it just puts a nice light coat down. Okay? And what we do is we can brush this all over and it's not going to be too strong or overpowering or anything like that it's just a nice light coat just to give um, our model that little something extra okay um, because I find that with a lot of washes you have to um, blah, you have to thin it down to the right consistency and I basically one day made my own wash, made it to the right consistency that I like, the right thin down, and I've used that ever since. And I basically thought, you know, if I prefer using it over other um, washes, why not produce it and sell it? So um, this is why I'm using this. And you do get bubbles. But it's quite nice how you give it a bit of a blow and the bubbles do pop um, relatively quickly. And that's really kind of give us a nice little effect there. And we just do the rest. It just seems to darken things up. It's, um, it flows nicely into all the um, corners, nooks and crannies. Which then you get a little bit of a build up of the wash which then gives you a shadow effect and it gives a nice all round sort of a dusty look everywhere else on all the flat areas. Remember if it's built up a little bit too much somewhere just make your brush a little bit drier by um, wiping on a paper towel and you can just suck up these little areas where you've got a little bit too much okay and that's that and then we can get in here on here on the rest of our cockpit area I'll take a still picture in a moment just to show you although it would probably be better if I wait for it to dry because it looks darker when brushing this on than what it's going to look when it dries when it dries it just lightens up a bit okay because it's looking it does look shall we say a bit strong when you brush it on which you might actually like but this is designed to just give a nice light dirty look if you want to have even more dirty you could um, maybe use MIG production or you could just maybe layer up and kind of add um, more coats if you want to do that Now this is looking really nice now because what we've done so far is we've built up you know two different layers of weathering right we've got that nice kind of um, dry brushing of silver which makes it look like you know scratch paint and stuff and then we've got this nice wash going on that gives us a a uh, nice bit of shadowing and a bit of dirt, grime, that sort of stuff. 
Okay. I'll do these other seats in a sec because I'm taking a bit of time doing this, boring you probably. So what I want to do is I want to bring out <coughs> another colour of wash. Now this is um, light cockpit grey and with these washes just look on the bottom and make sure there's nothing built up on the bottom, okay? So make sure it's all nicely mixed in together. Okay, so we'll open this up. Make sure you clean your brush. Okay, and with this one, I want to pick out areas that are like really dark. Okay, like maybe um, we've got a bit of olive green going on here, we could probably brush a bit on there. On the instrument panel, we've got a, quite a few bits of black, few black bits, so I want to just um, apply some of this here just to bring this out. Okay. And this um, light cockpit grey does seem to give us a nice um, sort of dusty look to our cockpit area, which I do like when that's dried. This is a nice, nice effect. Okay, so we'll let that dry, and while we're at it, I wanted to come in and use this dark wash <coughs> by MIG Production. And the reason why I'm using this wash is because this is, um, if you use this neat, this dark wash, it's quite um, strong, right? So where you apply this, you're going to end up with a really, really strong wash going down. Okay, so I want to apply this to the bottom, the bottom plates of our cockpit area, just to um, represent that you know the pilots get in dirty, muddy feet maybe, and they've um, been stepping on the the bottom plates and giving us that even more dirtier, muddy look. You now probably used too much there so I'm gonna just dry my brush by wiping it on this towel and sucking up the wash okay I'm just applying it to the bottom plates okay just like so and it just gives us you know, different colour washes, different styles of washes to give us different effects, different tones, different types of mud and different types of dirt, scratches, you know, really kind of liven it up in different ways rather than just let's slap one wash colour on, okay it looks nice, that's that, you know, let's really try and you know do lots of different things so what I'm gonna do now <coughs> I'm just gonna let this dry gonna um, finish off these seats and then we're gonna see how it dries because the thing is with washes washes can dry um, sort of in places it can where it may have pulled up where you might not have noticed and this kind of stuff it can dry a little strange in places it can dry like you can get um, sort of like watermarks and stuff and I'm just going to show you that with um, some cotton wool buds we can tidy it up and even areas that look good you can come along with a cotton wool bud and you can blend in our washes and make them look even better so I'll be back in a sec right then all our washes have now had a nice bit of time to dry and it's really starting to look nice but as I said with washes you can get areas that have pulled up that you may not have noticed and you can get like watermarks so what we're going to do is we're going to blend our say watermarks in and even blend in everywhere our wash to kind of it blends it in nicely and it gives it a much more natural, dirty, grimy look. 
and all you need to do is with a dry cotton wool bud okay we're just going to give our areas a bit of a rub down with a cotton wool bud now it's a little bit tricky because we've got quite a bit of detail going on um, so trying to get into the nooks and crannies can be a little tricky and if you ever get any stubborn stains you can just slightly lick the cotton wool but we don't want to completely um, have the cotton wool extremely moist because if you have it too moist, moist you can literally rub away our um, wash so maybe have one end a little bit wet the other end dry and we can just play around with merging blending in our wash just to make it all nice natural dirty grimy and have that kind of a dusty look to it okay and we're just going all around making sure we get everywhere one thing is with cotton wool birds you can get some of the hairs off the cotton wool birds go on to the model so you want to make sure you get rid of them maybe change your cotton wool bird when it starts to kind of hair up a bit and um, just to kind of minimize the bits of cotton wool that goes on the model okay a little bit of a lick blend that in a bit nicer just like so um, <clears throat> just do this part here as well just give it a nice rub and when this is all done what we've then got here is we've got all this nice um, different colors of wash different manufacturers of wash we've got dry brushing got all sorts of things going on here and I think one last bit of weathering a few pigments can really then finally set this alive as a nice textured nice toned nice dirty nice weathered um, cockpit maybe some tweezers okay so I've got some hairs that are just in here which I just can't get to so we just pick these out okay There we go, got them, another cotton wool bird, and that's now looking really nice in there, and in that one, and our instrument panels, give these a bit of a rub as well. And we've got a bit of a nasty bit of um, shall we say a watermark there but a little bit of a wet cotton wool bud has taken care of that right and that looks good so what I'm going to do now oh don't forget the seats as well and I've also painted up our seats uh, our seat belts with um, commando um, it's number 6182 Citadel this is the old pot so I mean they might have um, changed names and stuff but it's basically like a nice bleach bones kind of sandy sort of color um, I find that is a nice match for seat belts from what reference photos I've seen and I've just come along as well um, do you know the little buckles we did I've just painted them the buckles we did with the um, 
lead wire. I've painted them in with mithril silver. That's um, 6155 Citadel. Just get this last seat belt done. Blending in our wash. Okay. And this, this blending process is important, okay? Even if you've managed to nicely get all the pulled areas up and you've managed to, um, you know, limit that um, potential um, watermarks you may get, although, you know, you might do that, get uh, effectively do that, I just really think even when the wash looks good, this nice little blending process really does just it sort of picks up the um, the wash and it kind of moves it about and it just has that really nice blending effect and it just makes the whole thing a lot more natural, nicer and better. Okay, so I want to go another step with this and I'm thinking pigments um, and I'm just going to have a look what colours I've got here with MIG. Um, Panzer Grey maybe, maybe yeah, maybe a bit of Panzer Grey, and I've got some flurry models, um, and we've got a nice mud brown. So we've got two manufacturers here, and this is a nice new pot of MIG, as you can tell. Okay, we open up the pot. Okay, and we want to get a nice little brush so sort of like a nice dry brush we've got one here from um, Citadel small dry brush seems to be quite a ni nice brush and what I want to do is I don't want to brush all over um, these pigments I just want to keep it at the bottom just to give us that um, that feel that the, the floor plates are you know that little bit more muddy okay you know, to kind of represent that little bit of dirt and grime off the crew's, say, dirty feet and all that stuff. And just brush that around the bottom. Okay. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, now this stuff is messy, so it's good to have something like a paper towel down or, you know, some paper just to catch the pigments as they fall onto our surface here. Okay, maybe a little bit on our pedals here. Okay, so that's looking quite nice and dirty in there. And we could probably try maybe a little bit of our grey pigment and maybe brush that on the top areas okay just to kind of maybe um, show a bit of dust a bit more kind of dirt and grime on the upper areas okay just kind of representing different types of dirt going on um, where you probably find different types of dirt you know as I say a dirty bottom to kind of represent dirty shoes and maybe kind of like this nice dust top area to represent dust um, normal kind of dust okay and we could do this all over okay and this is really looking now like a nice, real, dirty, grimy, naturally looking cockpit area now. Okay, so although it's a bit of time and lots of different products and um, different colours and stuff, it really does give it a nice feel. Okay, so I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to give you a nice still picture of what this is now looking like. And I 
think you will agree that it has given this some real nice life. Okay. A little bit here on our instrument panel. That's looking good. And we can probably do a little bit on our seats as well. Just here and there. Maybe inside the seats as well. Just to dust up our, um, <coughs> our seat belts, to dust up our um, leather seats. Give it a blow if you just want to blow out some um, excess that might be in there. Okay. Oops, coming off the cocktail stick. Ooh, that's not staying in nicely. And there we go. So there's a lot of activity going on. <coughs> in our cockpit now and I'd say we're um, we're all done now we can just glue all this together have a look what it looks like all together do you a nice still picture and we can um, look at the results so let's put these on out the way now because we've just used these pigments, what we want to do is we want to make sure we're not going to get any pigments floating around, getting on our hands and um, making a mess of whatever we might be messing about with. So I'm just going to pull this up and clean that away. Okay. And now we can glue this into place. Actually, I'll glue this, this side in first. It is quite a, um, shall we say, a nice tight fit, but you've just got to make sure you get it right. Well, that's glued in there, and then we can get our seats, and we can start gluing these in. the instructions, make sure I'm putting the right seats in the right place and the right direction as well and we'll put a little bit of glue in there and let the capillary reaction do the work put a little bit of glue in just to help it stick as we put it on Put some more glue in. That's Tamiya extra thin cement, by the way. And now we've got them two in place. Last seat belt. There we go. And let the Tamiya extra thin cement get under there with its nice capillary reaction. Right then, <coughs> we've also got our instrument panel. Just check our instructions. A little bit of glue here just to hold it into place. And then a little bit more to find the glue in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take some pictures to show you the results of all this nice weathering. So I'll just take some still pictures now. Okay, so hopefully as you can see from the still pictures, we've got some nice dirty floor plates and it's just got that nice mixture of different weathering techniques 
bringing a nice dirty look to this whole thing so what we want to do now is we want to finalize this by bringing our two pieces together now as I said before that we did have some sort of warping going on so we kind of see I mean I don't know how you can see that on camera but we have got this like warping and it's not quite in position so we kind of want to shall we say glue one bit leave to dry and then we can glue the, the other bit so I've got this back bit here and I think a little bit of a elastic band just to hold this in position okay and we'll do this back part first get some of our glue in let the capillary action do all the work and get in there okay make sure your your cockpit's all nicely in position as well when you're happy that's in a nice um, position all round joining these two pieces at the back we can then leave this to dry and then we can position glue these there's a little join there and just on the top and we can position them um, once that's dry because once that's dry we know that's not going to go anywhere and then we can hold this in position glue this and so forth and so forth until we get a nice join all the way around okay because if we if we glued all the way around this now you'll probably end up finding that um, you know this part being glued is going to like push that part out and that part out and it you'll just be faffing around trying to get it all done right but we leave that to dry and we'll do all the rest so I'll be back in a sec right then so cockpit all done I've um, nicely glued this all around and it's all nicely in place and we've sorted that that bit of a warp problem I did kind of get a bit carried away with myself um, when gluing this together I actually glued as you know the all the seats in which as I say I got carried away really you want to keep these seats out because what's going to happen is these seats are you know sticking out quite a bit uh, out of our cockpit so when we're doing all our sanding and building this together we're gonna scratch it we're gonna knock it knock it out of place and everything so while it was still wet I quickly um, ripped them out and we can glue them back in again um, at the end so what we need to do now is start working on the rest of the kit so I'll just put that to one side and what I've got here is um, our landing gear section. I've done one and I'm just going to show you how to do the um, second one. Because I do like to um, leave all my landing gear um, separate, spray it separately, come in at the end and um, glue them in. However, with this particular kit, our landing gear section is actually built into the wing so there's no real way around this because this does actually build right into our wing section so we have to have it in um, which is a bit of a pain because you're going to have this bit of um, landing gear sticking up which um, could potentially you know knock scratch um, break and all this kind of stuff However, if I quickly show you the instructions, I haven't completely assembled it. Um, as you can see, what we've got is we've got this bottom bit here where it says 19. Okay, we've built that, but I've left um, piece A12 and F14, F13, left them on the sprues. I'll come to them later. I've left that bit off so it's not sticking up 
as much to you know give us all these kind of problems and I've left the wheels off so um, that bit should be fine because it does seem quite um, sturdy and I don't think we should get any breakages we might get a bit of scratching okay so I'm just going to start gluing this together and it is quite simple okay I've already um, you know um, kind of sanded these all these pieces here I've sanded and got rid of all the tab marks and everything so they're all just ready to start just glue together okay a bit of Tamiya extra thin and that glues in quite nicely and is quite sturdy nice and straight um, <clears throat> we can then in our little holes here there's four of them here where we just need to glue on two more pieces bit of glue there just so they hold into place okay and then we can maneuver these pieces together okay this piece actually um, this these two pieces actually glued together okay they're like two halves and with a blade we can just scrape along where the join is okay and what this will do is it it's um, it's a way of kind of like sanding really um, but not using sandpaper or sanding sticks you can actually use a blade to do a bit of sanding and I do like this technique because you can use this to um, I mean although you don't get although this model hasn't had that much flash um, you know no matter how good the model is you still get that light light bit of flash um, no matter how good the model is and this is a good way of just kind of scraping out those little bits of flash that you can still get um, it does work good on things like missiles and stuff you know that little bit of flash that you can get you can just scrape it out okay and it does look end up looking nice and smooth and it's just one of these extra little touches that you can do with models that really um, kind of shall we say it adds that little bit of extra professionalism because I mean when you're looking close on a model and you see these little tiny bits of flash that you can still get um, it, do, it can look a bit off especially when you use washes because the washes are going to want to go to these little bits of flash um, by doing that you just give it that little bit extra than normal Okay, I've got to make sure this is orientated the right way. Yep, that's right. Is it? Hold on a sec. I don't think that's right. It should be that way. Yeah. That's it. Just make sure that you've got... Um, shall we say, um, this one comes inwards, this one comes inwards. Okay, because what we don't want is we don't want um, kind of two facing outwards kind of landing gear. Okay, we want them to both come face inwards. Okay, so we've got that both coming on the inner side of our landing gear there. And because we've just put a little bit of um, glue down just to hold them in position. Oh, hold on, that's the right one. A uh, little bit of glue, a bit more glue just to make sure we got it because the first little bit of glue was just to hold them there just so we can play around with getting them in position okay so that should be all glued nicely now and then we've got this little bar which the instructions are a little kind of um, where do they go I've looked at reference photos and it still kind of looks a little tricky so I'm sort of guesstimating where it goes but it does appear to go we do have um, let me get it right we do have a little tab up just underneath and a little hole on this piece and we just stick that bit on there so we've got our little um, piece here in that um, little tab and our little hole but then this piece here this end here where this glues to is a bit of a mystery 
because the instructions don't quite show it that well and I haven't found any real good reference photos of the landing gear so I don't exactly know where it goes so I'm just gonna it's a bit fiddly guesstimate where it goes just so it looks nice okay just a bit of glue there a little bit more glue there make sure it's in a good position Right, and that's our second set of landing gears done, okay? Now, I'm gonna give them a little bit of time to dry and then I'm going to give them a bit of a spray, okay? Now, while we wait for that to dry a bit, we've got an, our engine bay area. Um, and with this, we just need to glue these in. Now, you only wanna use a little bit of glue when putting these, um, uh, I think they're like uh, an exhaust or something, um, just a little bit of glue, too much glue, and you end up making a bit of a mess because it's a bit of a tight fit and you want it to look nice this side. And if you put too much glue, it's going to kind of start gluing all this side and it makes it look a bit funny. So just a nice little bit of glue just to hold it into position. Do not go mad with this bit because I, I did a bit here and I had to kind of, um, all this was kind of joining together and everything and I had to um, kind of cut it and make it look nice, but that's nice now and I don't want any problems with this one. Okay, and there's one either side. They are different either sides, so make sure you get the right one. Okay, a little bit of glue again. Okay, <clears throat> make sure that's nicely in position, and that's good. These do fit quite nicely as well. Okay, well the last one did. This one's not looking too bad either. Okay, run a little bit of our Tamiya Extra Thin Cement along our joins. One either side. Okay, and let the capillary action just flow this glue in between these nice joints. Okay, now this is something we're going to want to be taking care of. We want to get these joints nice and seamless when this is dried, and then we'll be doing some rescribing on this. Okay, and then we do have some pieces in here. Okay, and they slot either side. Now we'll just make sure I've got the orientation right. Okay, because one's got like um, three holes in it. You'll see if you do this kit. Hold on. Getting this in wrong. Let's try it again. Okay, and they do fit really nice actually as well. Okay, and just a little bit of glue. We don't want to overpower this bit, it only needs a little bit of glue. We don't want loads of glue spurting out, okay, because that way we should then still get a nice kind of. Um, recess area around these two pieces we just popped in there. Now, um, that's two of these done now. A um, few problems with this engine section. Um, one is, if we glue this in now, okay, what would be nice is, um, there's a nice bit of detail around our engine front bit here, and if we used a um, Mr. Metal, Mr. Metal um, um, iron, um, and it's a buffable paint. That's going to look really nice. Okay, if we glue this in now, um, we're then going to have to mask it up so that we can spray the rest of the model. However, it is such a nice fit. Okay, as you can see, that we can just spray these these two pieces separately, 
and buffed them up our nice um, iron colour by Mr Metal and then after we've done our spraying it literally does just slot in virtually perfect okay so we're going to leave them out till last so I'll throw them in a pot nice and safe um, but the other thing we do have with this if I just put it together um, get the right orientation and I think it's going to be like that um, but basically what you can see is just under here um, it literally you can literally just see right through and when you've got the model upside down you're going to see this gap here um, and what you'd probably see a load, load of nice engine area an engine bay what you're going to see is a hollowed out engine so a little bit of plastic car just inside there you know nothing fancy it's just kind of a blanking plate just to stop you seeing all the way through so I'll do that off camera but a little bit of scratch building you might want to do there although it is underneath I mean you might want to skip that it's up to you um, so that's the engines um, kind of ready to be sanded and everything so what we want to do now is get some spraying done okay I'm just going to use some of these tweezers <coughs> okay and we're just going to mount all this on um, the one of a little problem as well is we've got one of these um, encased shall we say um, wheel then this is the rear wheel and what I've done is this is was two pieces and I've glued them together but we can't get our wheel in now but I've done that deliberately because I like to get my wheels and I like to put them on um, toothpicks so as I can spray the hubcap um, all nicely I can paint the tires and have easy access to do that and a lot of the time you get to do that with no problems but sometimes you get these like um, all round encased um, wheels sometimes on like with World War II and stuff you get um, um, the back wheel some jets you have them on the, uh, the front wheel um, so what I like to do in cases like this I like to just cut our little um, so we say pointy bits that hold our wheel into place I like to just cut them okay so that we can then hopefully fit in our wheel right just like so it does mean that we will have to glue it at the end um, but it just allows us to easily accessly excessively excessively sorry be able to access the wheel and you know our landing gear sections all nicely and easily to paint and spray and all that kind of stuff so I'll put that wheel over there we're going to spray this nicely and separately because um, actually the hub caps are a different colour to the actual landing gear now colour for the landing gear um, I've looked at a load of different reference photos and work that everyone else has done and you know it's a bit hard to find out exactly what the exact color is because um, Ravel they actually ask you to do it they say E which E translates to um, light olive matte okay which I've not seen any reference photos of a light olive matte um, I've seen a lot of people do like a light grey, um, sort of like a light aircraft grey. Um, in some reference photos, it kind of appeared silver, um, but those were like really old photos and you couldn't really tell the exact colour. Um, but there are two um, JU88s in existence in museums, and the one museum I saw. Um, it was all light aircraft grey so I'm gonna go with what I saw at the museum um, and I think that was that one was in the US or something but the pictures I saw it was a light aircraft grey so I'm just gonna 
get some of this, and I'm going to be using Vallejo 71050 light grey. Okay, I'm going to whack this in neat because I'm only doing some little pieces here. Okay, and we just give this a nice spray all over, a light coat to start with, just to build up. Um, a bit of paint on our actual surface to allow um, more kind of heavier coats to be able to stick. Okay, and while we're going through this, we can also think where else do we need to get down um, some light aircraft grain. And that's going to be our wheel well. So we're going to spray inside our aircraft here in our fuselage section as well. Nice, quick, light, misty coats. And inside our wings as well. Okay. As you can see, I mean, I've been doing half and half, so I can like. Um, make sure I get it right, make sure the fitting is going to be right, the best way to fit it and then I can show you with the second half, you know, how I went about it. Okay, so I've just given light misty coat all over, so I may as well cut away and get all these kind of nicely sprayed. Um, just to kind of let you know, I was at about um, 25 psi spraying that and it was in neat.